our service of holy baptism begins on page 299 of the Red Book of Common Prayer. Page 299. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. 
The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is righteous. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. While the disciples were telling how they had seen Jesus risen from the dead, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, 
Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful people with the power of your word. Amen. Please be seated. Last fall, our town planted a tree in front of our house, in the median between the sidewalk and the street. We had been asking for a tree for several years, ever since the tree that had been there previously had died and had been taken down by the town. Although the Shade Tree Commission told us that we could choose from one of several types of trees, when they finally got around to planting our tree, it was right at the end of the planting season and we just got whatever was left. So the tree was delivered, but it didn't have an identifying tag on it. And the town employees, employees who planted it didn't have a clue what kind of tree it was. So I realized that I'd just have to be patient and wait for spring to learn the identity of our new tree. At first I thought, or at least hoped, that it might be a red bud, because there have been several planted on our street in several years. But then I looked at the bark more closely, and the bark resembled that of a cherry tree. And I got excited. I thought, oh, a cherry tree, that will be really beautiful. But when the buds began to open several weeks ago, what they became were not cherry blossoms, but just leaves. So it wasn't going to be a cherry tree. And even now, the leaves are still small, and the tree has not yet fully taken shape. So I will just need to exercise further patience and wait to find out what kind of a tree this is. Whatever specific type of tree it is will be revealed in good time, as long as it continues to receive enough water and sunlight, maybe a little mulch, perhaps some fertilizer. The reading from the first letter of John is addressed to Christian believers in several different places, several small communities of faith, probably in Western Asia Minor. And there seems to have been some conflict in these communities, perhaps even some splits in these churches, but scholars have not been able to pinpoint what the argument was. They think maybe it was something about Jesus' nature and his identity but they're really not sure. At any rate, the author of this letter, which is really more of like a, uh, a sermon that was being sent around to these different churches, the author is reminding these early Christians of God's identity and of their own. God is the one who loves them deeply and without end. And they are God's children part of God's family through faith in Christ. But becoming God's children didn't start with them. It started with God. It was God's initiative rooted in God's love. God first loved them, shown supremely in Jesus' death and resurrection, and then they responded in faith. The author goes on to say that the world, that is those outside of Christian faith, the world does not recognize them as being children of God or even really know what that means. 
Perhaps he is saying this because whatever the quarrel or argument was that had caused a rift among them had somehow tarnished who they were. We can't really be sure. But what is very clear is that the author is reminding these Christians of their identity here and now. They are God's children. And yet, there is more to come. Day by day, they are being changed into greater Christ-likeness. They don't know the details of what that will look like when the process is complete. But they do know that they will be like Jesus, the risen Lord, and they will be fully revealed at Christ's return on the last day, at the end of the age, in God's own good time. It's like that tree in front of our house that I'm still waiting to see in all its glory when, when, when it is fully leafed out to really know and understand what it is. The truth that the author of 1 John spoke to those early Christians is true for us as well. We are loved by God before we can even think to love him or even wonder about him. God takes the initiative in loving us. And it is on the strength of this understanding that we can do anything at all, that we can pray or worship or learn or follow Jesus. Because God first loves us, we can come to him in faith. We can present our children for baptism or even be baptized ourselves. Even before we know the difference between right and wrong, before we are capable of choosing good or choosing evil, God has already chosen to love us and to cherish us. And he came among us in the person of Jesus, stretched out his arms upon the cross, saying without words, I love you this much. It is often said about couples who have loved and lived together over decades that after a while they start to look like each other. Has anybody ever heard that saying? A couple of people have. Certainly, they begin to anticipate and adopt one another's habits and ways of speaking and thinking. They begin to resemble each other in some really important ways about what they value, about what it is that is at the center of their lives. And the same is true for us the longer we live with God in a relationship of faith and trust. The longer we follow Jesus and the more we learn to model ourselves after him and the deeper our love and trust in him goes, the more like Christ our nature, our behavior, our instincts, and our heart will become. It's a lifelong process, one that begins in baptism and is nurtured all along the way by prayer and worship, by the sacraments of grace, by experience in a loving and connected Christian community. It does not happen overnight or even over a few years. We have times of growing and thriving in our faith, and times when we fall into a fallow stretch. There are times when the fruit of faith and the spirit seems abundant, and other times when we go through a cold and wintry challenge. Faith in Christ and being God's children is like my tree. It grows and develops and comes to fullness over time with loving care and attention. And it is only when we are fully grown and leafed out that the true vision of who God always intended us to be will be revealed in God's own new creation. Let us pray. Lord, let us be planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither, as the psalmist says. Give us grace to trust you, to follow you, and to love you all our days. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. As we sing this next hymn, I would invite any children who are here to come forward and sit on the floor to be up close for the baptism. And I would ask the parents and godparents and the baptismal candidates to please come forward and stand here. And the rest of us, let us stand and sing together hymn number 299. Service continues on page 301. The candidates for holy baptism okay. The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented and we will start with Millie's godparents and her parents. Now, Quinn. <laughs> Will you be responsible for seeing that the child, children you present are brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help these children to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I know. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? The next question is addressed to the entire congregation, and your answer is a hearty, we will. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? Let us join with Millie and Quinn who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. 
Do you believe in God the Father? Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit of the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you per persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. Let us now pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to grace and peace. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Is right to give and grace. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to his Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I'm going to pour some water on your head. Quinlan Robert Mansfield, I baptize you in the, ooh, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm sorry.
close your eyes, Millie. Amelia Jane Mansfield, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Millie, you are sealed in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Quinn, Jesus calls you with him to be the light of the world. Millie, Jesus calls you with him to be the light of the world. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon these your servants the forgiveness of sin and raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know you and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. And now let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. So, Quinn, will you walk around the church with me? Yeah. No? Okay. Millie, will you walk with me? Yeah. You, Mom can put you down. Yeah. Here, you can hold my hand. Let's just, we'll just walk. Okay. 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 All right. I'm just going to take a little walk. So, please greet our newest Christians. Come say hello to everybody. Where's the choir? Yay. All right. Turn around. Go back the other way. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share a sign of God's peace. Millie, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Good job. Peace be with you, Rob. <laughs> You're welcome. Peace be with you. <laughs> welcome. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. You're welcome. Peace be with you, Carrie. John Carlos. Okay. All right. So let's see. This is Michael. That's for you. That's for you and John Carlos. And so you can blow the candles out. Yeah. yeah. Oops. Okay. Those are for them. Please be seated. Well, a very joyous welcome to our service this morning, especially to the Mansfield and Alvarez families. We're so glad that you're here with us today. Um, 
welcome also to those who are joining us on Zoom or who will be watching the video later. Uh, we do have some announcements at the back, uh, back page of the service leaflet. Please do take a look at them. Um, in particular, I just want to highlight that there are signups for helping with the fish and chips dinner. Um, actually, we liked it so much we put it in twice in the announcements. I, I guess we need your help. Um, there are other announcements here as well, and a reminder of the date of uh, Charlotte Davis's funeral, which will be May 18th. And there are other things here to look at, so so please do. Um, and of course, you are very welcome to join us for coffee hour across the street in the parish house upstairs. Just come across the the street, uh, and you can either go in the door that faces Church Road, or you can go to the parking lot and go up that way, go up the stairs. But please join us for some some refreshments following the service. As our service proceeds into communion, into the Eucharist, please know that all baptized Christians are welcome to receive communion at the Lord's table. Come forward when the ushers indicate. Uh, we, we line up starting here um, at the altar rail on this side and go that way. You can stand at the altar rail or kneel either way. Um, put your hands out like this. You'll be given bread in your hand. You may then consume the bread immediately and drink from the chalice or save your wafer and dip it in the wine. Either way is fine. If you will not be receiving today, please come forward anyway. Cross your arms across your chest and you'll be given a blessing. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
in our prayers today, we remember all on our parish prayer list, and we remember and pray especially for Joseph and Barbara Inners, for whom the altar flowers are given. Also for those who have died this week, Ruth Agnes Herbert, Dolores Demersky, and Delaine Schaub. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks to them, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. 
we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Continuing on page 366 of the prayer book, let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are loving members of your body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children, through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of Christ's resurrection. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.